and then I convince myself that I'm dying. Hello everyone and welcome to an extra midweek video and that's because today is a subscriber recommended video. Yeah, so Delaney, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, wanted me to go ape with a chanting tool and I also hope I'm pronouncing that right. Chanting tool. Chanting tool. So I had to do a little bit of research on what a tajanting tool actually was and what it's intended for. And this is basically what it is. So you've got like a little chamber here with a little spout and it's used to put wax in here, melt it and then kind of pour it. And it's traditionally used for like batik, so doing wax resists on fabrics. So creating your wax pattern on fabric, dyeing the fabric, getting the wax off, repeating and doing all that kind of stuff. And I was kind of contemplating doing something like that. But then I thought, that sounds like a lot of work. So I thought another interesting idea to use this Tijentin tool would be to create a wax painting and just have a little bit of fun, have a little bit of experimenting and create a nice funky piece of artwork with wax, with my tool. So I've got my canvas here. I've also got a ton of wax. I'm pretty sure this is soy based wax. I found it in the studio and it doesn't have a label. So I'm not entirely sure what kind of wax it is, but I'm pretty sure it's soy. And then I also have a ton of different pigments to color the wax and to heat this up I was thinking about buying a it's like a little wax melt pot but I didn't get one and I don't know why I didn't I think it would have been easy to do it that way but the way I'm doing it is I'm just gonna light a candle put the wax in here and then melt it up that way and then kind of drizzle it on hopefully this will work I've never used one of these before so I don't really know what I'm doing but it doesn't sound that complicated and usually when I decide to do a painting I always end up going for a landscape for some reason or some flowers or something like that and I don't want to today I want to mix things up a little bit so today I thought I would create a contemporary, conceptual, pop art-ish, surrealist-ish portrait. It's basically going to be a portrait of someone that I don't know and it's going to be very just colourful and weird. Abstract. It's basically going to be abstract. Okay, do I want to draw it out first or do I just want to get straight into it? I think I just want to dive straight into it. So I'll just light this candle. What colours do I have? I basically have every single colour there is. You know what, because this portrait isn't going to be accurate, I think I kind of want to create like a monster, you know? Like some sort of weird monster with horns or something really strange and out there. So I'm going to make it skin colour, like bright purple. So if I just pop a bit of this in here. You don't need that much, I don't think, to dye this wax. And then just add some regular wax flakes in with the coloured one. Surprisingly as well, this looks like quite a small little container. But if you actually look inside, I think it's going to hold quite a lot of wax. The only thing I'm slightly worried about is obviously having to control this. Because there's no like on-off switch or anything. I assume it's just going to start pouring out as soon as it turns into a liquid. And then whatever happens will happen. Okay, we'll go with that. Just melt you down on this. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. See, if I'd bought a little melting pot, I could could have just dipped the tajanting tool into it and then just done it that way and had a constant pot of melted wax on the go. But then also I would have had to change the wax if I was wanting to change the colours. Maybe that's why I didn't buy one. There was a reason. I can't remember what reason it was, but I thought of a reason and that's why I didn't get one. Actually, I think this can hold a bit more wax, you know. I'm going to put a bit more in. I think this is going to be really fun, you know. And if you just tilt it up on an angle, it doesn't pour out of the stem. So that's good. So it does have some sort of control to it. Right, okay, that's fully melted. Time to figure out what I'm doing. Oh, I'm so scared. So I just want the basic shape of like a face. All right, this comes out slower than I thought it was going to. For some reason, I thought it was going to pour out in like a perfect line, not just lots of slow dots, but that's okay. The thing is, we've already established that I'm quite an impatient person and this just isn't, it's not helping. It's actually really easy to control because it's incredibly slow. Maybe as if I go, oh, oh, actually, yeah. Oh, if I drag like that. Oh, that's better. I didn't even think of doing it this way. It's just like basically a wax pen. Oh, now that I thought about touching the canvas, this is, oh no, I'm enjoying it now. All right, and then I want to fill this entire thing in with the wax. Okay, I think I need a refill now. Yeah, this is definitely a long process of doing something, but it feels quite nice in your hand. It feels different. It's something I've obviously never done before, and um, I'm actually kind of into it. As soon as I get this next batch melted up, that should be enough to fill this entire thing in. Oh. 
Okay, I need a refill. Also, one thing I've realized is that it's very difficult to get the exact same tone of wax, as you can see. Like, that batch I've just put on is a lot darker than the first batch I put on. So that's kind of the annoying part of doing it this way. But again, I'm using this tool the way you're not supposed to really do it. So if you're going to do it for this, just, just keep that in mind, I guess. I was just thinking, I'm doing it this way with a Tajantin tool to create a portrait out of wax. But there are things called crayons, and that's just colored wax, basically isn't it? So I'm just creating a very time-consuming wax portrait. I don't know what the reason for that is. I was just about to say for a reason. I don't know what it is. But it's definitely a different technique and there is something quite nice about it. There's something nice to have the tool in your hand and it feels different. It feels way different to a crayon obviously. And it's more fun actually. It's just it's just a lot more time-consuming. Okay so I think this batch is ready now and this should definitely be enough to finish that. I'll be very annoyed if it isn't. <laughs> Oh, where'd that black come from? Oh, it came from the bottom. Oh, how annoying. Yeah, because the bottom of this is burnt. Try and kind of dilute that black. Oh, I'm gutted. I'll have to use that black as a bit of a feature or something. I don't know how to get rid of it. Hang on, I'll try and get a bit of tissue and just wipe that off. Because I'm not having that. Right, well, I got the thick of it off. Yeah, don't touch the bottom of the gold thing the base bit onto your work because it does burn and then you'll be left with just a black blob. I'll try and hide that when I add some features onto this face. This is a face by the way if you're wondering. Okay, so I've finished my, basically the outline of a face, and it definitely looks a little bit messy, but weirdly it's got kind of like a painterly vibe to it. I think it's quite nice. Some people would say, oh, it looks really messy and rough, but I quite like it like that. I feel like it's got artistic flair. So I'm getting more and more into this as I go on, but obviously it doesn't, it's just, it's just a circle at the moment. It's gonna get better, I swear. I'm assuming I could just pour this wax onto this tissue just to get rid of the, yeah, that's what I was talking about before. The whole bottom of that's gone really black. Let's see if this black comes off. I'm assuming it's just from the gold. Yeah. It's just kind of like burny stuff. That comes off dead easy, so it's not it's not a big deal or anything. Now I need to figure out what my little monster is actually gonna look like. I haven't thought that far ahead. Okay, I think I'll add some eyes and a mouth. And I'll start with the white because obviously the balls of your eyes are white. And I'll do the white for the teeth. I'm having to think about it in colour stages to do one colour and then another colour, just so I don't waste any. Obviously, I haven't added any dye to this because the wax itself's just white. So I'm assuming it'll just turn up white, won't it? That's a bit weird doing it on wax. Wax on wax, it kind of floats. Oh, I suppose obviously it's going to melt the underlayer of the wax, isn't it? So it might go a bit pink. It's fine. This is just going to look very strange, this piece of work. I feel like that eye looks quite sad. I want to create kind of like fangs. Yeah, I don't know whether they look like fangs. You can't see that at all on camera, but I can see it in person. Right, I need some black for the pupils. Then everyone will understand that their eyes. Ah, I didn't get as much control on that as I wanted to. Do I need any more black anywhere? Oh, I need a nose. I'm gonna just do like a, I suppose I'm doing a monster aunt where I'm not doing a correct looking thing. That's it's, <laughs> that's, <laughs> That's supposed to be a nose. Or like a, like an interpretation of a nose. We'll go with that. This is looking very strange. I don't know whether I'm happy with it yet. Okay, I think I want to go for some red now. Because I want to create some lips. And I think I want to do some horns. But not typical, like, straight and curly horns. Maybe it's like weird, curvy, wiggly horns. I think that's what I'm thinking. Kind of like a ram but not a ram, which doesn't make sense at all. What am I talking about? Sometimes I say stuff and I start a sentence and I have nowhere to go with the sentence. I do it all the time when I'm recording a video. I set myself up for failure. Uh, also, a little life update. Well, kind of a life update, not really a life update. It's quite boring actually, because my life's boring. Obviously, I suffer quite a lot with tinnitus. I know I've whinged on about it quite a lot, but it's been getting worse recently. And one of you guys commented in one of my videos, I can't remember which one it was or who it was, but they said I should go and get my ears kind of cleaned out because it's probably a wax build up. And I thought that too because my ears feel very blocked but there's also just a constant ringing and whooshing sound in my ear. So I booked an appointment at the audiologist and I went yesterday. By the way, I didn't know audiologists were a thing. They specialize in like hearing and stuff. And I went along expecting to get just huge amounts of like gooey wax, possibly even like a dead cockroach out of my ear because that's what it feels like. It feels like they're just so 
full. And he looked in my ears and he said that they were super clean. He in fact said that they were the cleanest ears he's ever seen in the entire world. I'm obviously paraphrasing that. He didn't say that, but I interpreted what he said as that. But yeah, so there's absolutely nothing inside my ears, which I find quite weird because they just feel like I've got a sponge or something in there. So I'm going to have to make an appointment at the doctor's and figure out what's going on. But I'm at that stage in my life where I feel like I'm self-diagnosing all my problems. So I'll do a little Google research and figure out my symptoms and figure out what's going on with us. And then I convince myself that I'm dying. And I think in the past two weeks, I've convinced myself that I'm dying about five times from five various different illnesses. So I just really need to get my ass to the doctors, don't I? But it's just a nightmare when you can't hear anything, especially when you're editing a video, trying to edit and getting all the sound levels right. It's impossible. So if you ever come across one of my videos and either the audio is very quiet or the music just screams at you, it's because I've had trouble hearing what it actually sounds like. Right, let's get some, well, let's attempt to do some lips. Okay, I feel like that looks all right. I think that looks like lips. Do I want the lips to be a bit bigger? Just want a bit of, a bit more collagen in there or whatever you call it. Right, and horns. It's a strange looking horn, but I've done it now. I don't think that's what I had in my head, but never mind. Sometimes accidents can work in your favor. Other times, they don't. The thing is, I was going for kind of like really spooky monster and I feel like it looks a bit more sad and confused. I feel like they definitely look confused. I don't think they look scary yet. So maybe we're going for more of a morby kind of monster. Maybe this one just doesn't fit in with everyone else. It just reminded me actually of, if you've ever seen Futurama, the people who live underground. I think that's maybe what I'm going for. Unintentionally. I haven't watched Futurama in forever, but that's what it's reminded me of. Now, do you think I'll be able to match that horn and do it symmetrically. I don't think I'm going to be able to, but I'm going to try. Uh, it's a little bit similar, but definitely not the same. It's also a different colour. I've got loads of this red left. What shall I do with that? I don't want to waste it. I want to do the body in a different colour. Maybe I'm just going to do some red dots around here just to kind of fill this space in. I've just realised this may potentially look like blood, but it's not supposed to. I'll go for blue for the bottom part. Okay, let's create some sort of body. I don't want to give it a neck. Oh, where'd that come from? Ah, don't start. Okay, I've just, I've just, it's just started happening. I, I wasn't really planning on, I didn't, uh I didn't have time to think. It's now a monster that wants to blend in with society. So it dresses the way normal people dress or normal people dress. And apparently normal people dress in just blue, whatever this closet is with a black stain on it. It's hard doing these really big parts to color in because it, just, it takes so much wax. Okay, that's finally done. Oh, that took so long. Okay, I think I'll switch to green and I want to do some like wiggly bits off here that may potentially kind of look like tentacles, but also they just might look like a fun pattern just to fill in the space. I think this whole process has just basically been a surprise. It's like whatever happens, happens. <laughs> Okay, that's different, isn't it? I feel like it needs something. Maybe I should do like dots on it. And I think I just want to add one more feature on the face and I feel like I'll be happy. I don't know whether this is gonna make me feel good or bad, but I'm doing it. And I think maybe it's just a couple of, they could just be, I don't know why I put them there. It just felt like it needed it. And I think I'm done. I think I've created a masterpiece. Okay, so here's my finished wax painting in all of its glory. It definitely looks unusual. It's not what I had in my mind at all when I first started this, but I kind of like it. The thing is, if you saw this in an art gallery, you would instantly think it was contemporary art. It's all about context. So for example, if you saw Tracy Emin's bed, in a bedroom, you would just think it's a bed. But when it's in an art gallery, it's modern art. See, it's all subjective. It's all, all based on context. I've done art history, so I know my shit. 
this this is this is art. But let me know what you think I should name my monster, my person, whatever kind of thing this is. I can't tell what name it would have. I feel like it would have like a normal name, kind of like Betty. I don't know. Let me know what your names are. Now, unfortunately, this painting won't survive, and there isn't a lot of longevity to it because the mouth started to crack and come off, and it's happening with other bits as well. So there's a bit of cracking up here. There's a bit of cracking up there. It's basically all just going to crack and fall apart because it's wax on canvas. What are we expecting? But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And I think if I ended up getting round to doing the proper batik fabric dyeing, then this would come in great for that. I think it's a really nice tool. But anyway, me and Betty will see you on Friday for a brand new video. Won't we, Betty? Doesn't talk. I'm such an asshole. Like some of the things I say, I'm just like, shut up.